Oh, hope everyone is doing well. Mr. Schwanekamp is back. Today we are talking about synthetic division. Uh, kind of an interesting concept. It works really well. Uh, some students really kind of enjoy it once they get going. Um, it's allowing us to find all the different x-intercepts of a graph. And just by plugging in a number, we'll be able to tell if it, if it works or not. It's kind of a strange concept, but it's not hard. And uh, once you get used to it, it's pretty pretty fun almost. I don't know. I don't know if a lot of people refer to math as fun, but for me it's fun. So we'll see if that's the same for you. So let's get to it. So this whole, gra this whole chapter is called polynomials. And what we're doing in this chapter is eventually we've been working to this point. Where does the graph cross the x-axis? All right. Names for this. There's a lot of different names for where a graph crosses uh, the x-axis. It could be called an x-intercept. It can be called a solution. It can be called a root. It could be called a zero. All four of those phrases mean the exact same thing. It is a place that makes the statement true. It is a solution to the graph that makes it equal to zero. I'm going to say that it's all x-intercepts, but again, it could be imaginary, which throws some word, some differences into it. But all of those places are referring to those spots right there. You could also talk about a factor. Factor is not going to be exactly the same. If you have a factor, it's going to be written with X and it's going to have the opposite sign, but it's going to lead you to an X intercept or a root. So just keep that in mind there. So here's what we're trying to do. We're going to have a problem like this. X cubed minus 2X squared minus 5X plus 6. It's X cubed. So the fundamental theorem of algebra tells us that whatever our biggest exponent is, that's how many answers I'm going to have. So it's cubed. So I'm going to have three answers. All right. We could technically factor it if we wanted to, but notice that each factor, negative one becomes one, two becomes negative two, negative three becomes three. Those are the three spots on this graph that I'm intersecting. That's eventually what we're trying to get to. All right. So keep that in mind. Look at how we can do this using synthetic division. All right. So if we are doing synthetic division, what we're going to do is we're going to put a box and a line. Across the top, we are going to write the coefficients of whatever is given. And so it's 1x cubed, so we put a 1. And then negative 2x squared, so we write negative 2. Negative 5x, so we put negative 5. And 6, we put 6. And what we're going to do is this method, and what it's really what it's doing is it's like it's plugging in the number. If we want to check to see if negative 2 is a root, okay, we put negative 2 in the box. And so here's how we do this. Negative 2, that's what we're checking to see if that's where it crosses the x-axis. We take the first number, we bring it right down, we write down the number 1. And then we're going to multiply. If it's on the bottom, we're going to multiply by whatever's in the box. So negative 2 times 1 gets me negative 2. I write it up and to the right. Now these numbers are stacked. So when we have stacked numbers in math class, we add them together. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. It's written on bottom, so we're going to multiply by that number in the box. So negative 2 times negative four gets me positive eight. They're stacked, so I add negative five plus eight is three. It's written on bottom, so I'm gonna multiply. Negative two times three. Negative two times three is negative six, so I write it up into the right. Six plus negative six gets me zero. Whatever the last number we get is the remainder. If we get a zero, then it is a root. It is a zero, it is a solution. All right, that's the key. To what we're doing here. It's a little strange, but you'll get the hang of it. All right, so let's try it. Determine if x minus 4 is a factor. All right, so we're going to go box and a line. If we want to determine if something is a root or a zero or, or, or any of those things, we're doing synthetic division. So I'm going to do my leading coefficients. 1, 1 x cubed, negative 17 x squared, negative 20 x, and then 32 is my number. Notice that I have one for each one. This is x to the fourth, this is x cubed, that's x squared, that's x, that's a number. I'm seeing if x minus 4 is a factor. So if x minus 4 is a factor, that means I'm checking to see if positive 4 is a root. You just got to pay attention. Is it written as a factor? Is it written with x? And we got to change the sign. If I'm just checking a number, you just write it in the box. All right, here we go. So we take the first number, we bring it down below. When it's down below, we're going to multiply by whatever's in the box. So 4 times 1. So we're multiplying here, and we're going to write it up and to the right. 
So we're going to put a 4 there. These numbers are stacked, so I'm going to add 1 plus 4 is 5. It's written on bottom, so I'm multiplying. 4 times 5 is 20. They're stacked, so I'm going to add. Negative 17 plus 20 is 3. It's written on bottom, so I'm going to multiply. 4 times 3 is 12. They're stacked, so I'm going to add. Negative 20 plus 12 is negative 8. It's on bottom, so I'm going to multiply. 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. They're stacked. I add, I get 0. So what does this tell me? It tells me that when I plug in 4, I get 0. That means the ordered pair 4, 0 is on this graph. That's what we just found out. And that would be good enough. That would tell me that, yes, determine is this a factor? Yes, it is, because I got 0. If I don't get 0, then the answer is no. The other cool thing that we get from this is it is division. We just took out x minus 4. And so what we just found out is that if you divided x minus 4 out, if you factored it out, you would be left with this left over. It was an x to the fourth problem. I just took one out. So now it is 1x cubed plus 5x squared plus 3x minus 8. 1x cubed, 5x squared, 3x minus 8. That's what we have left over. So I already found one answer, x minus 4 because I plugged in positive 4, so if I wrote it as a factor, it would be x minus 4. Then what I would have to do is solve this guy to find the other three answers. Kind of interesting. We'll get back to that later. Let's try the next one. Determine if negative 3 is a root. x cubed, blah, 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 blah. So to check that, box and a line across the top of right and coefficients. 1x cubed, 6x squared, negative 1x, negative 30. I'm checking to see if negative 3 is a root. So in the box, I'm going to put negative 3. I bring down the first number, I multiply. They're stacked, so I add. It's on bottom, so I multiply. They're stacked, so I add. It's on bottom, so I multiply. Stacked, I add, I got zero. Since I got zero, determine is it a root? Yes, negative three is a root. If I graphed this thing, it would touch the x-axis at negative three. And it was an x cubed problem, so if it was an x cubed, that makes this 1x squared plus 3x to the first power, minus 10. I just went one degree lower. It was x cubed, so now it's going to be x squared. All right, so then all I would have to do is solve that guy. So just, let's just do it because we're to this point. Two numbers that multiply together to get me negative 10. Uh, how about positive 5 and negative 2? And so what did I just find? Well, I found that there is an answer at negative 3 at negative 5 and positive 2. So let's check that on Desmos. So I went ahead and graphed this thing, x cubed plus 6x squared minus x minus 30. Notice what we found. When I plugged in negative 3, I was determined if it was a root. Because I got 0, we got a yes answer. Okay, well, at negative 3, we got 0. But what were the other two answers that we found? We found negative 5 and positive 2. When I graph it, I cross the graph at negative 5 and positive 2. So by doing synthetic division, I'm able to find all the x-intercepts. And that's the whole point of this thing. All right, I've showed it to you. Now I'm going to start moving a little bit quicker. So I'm determined if negative 3 is a factor. So since it's written with x, I'm going to change the sign. My leading coefficients are 1, 4, negative 15, and negative 18. Bring it down. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. And guess what? I got zero again. So is three a factor? Yep. If I get anything but zero, the answer is no. So far, I've done a lot of them with yes, but they don't always have to be yes. It was x cubed, so this is 1x squared plus 7x plus 6. This is just what's left over. I could solve that to find my other answers. But the question, is three a factor? Yes. Or is x minus three a factor? Yes, because three is a zero. Is negative 2 an x-intercept? So we're going to put negative 2 in the box. Again, it's not written with x, so I'm not changing the sign. Leading coefficients are 3, negative 1, 1, negative 2. Bring it down. Multiply. Bring it down. Multiply. Bring it down. Multiply. Bring it down. I get negative 32. So is x an intercept, or is negative 2 an intercept? No, because I did not get 0. What that negative 32 means is if I graphed this thing, it goes through the point negative 2, negative 32. 
but this right here doesn't really tell me anything if it's not a zero. If that doesn't get me zero, then that doesn't, that just kind of means like garbage to me. But what it did tell me was an ordered pair, negative two, negative 32 is on my graph, but it is not a factor. It does not go through zero. Let's do it again. So this one's a little bit tougher. Is negative one a root of this guy? So to check that, I'm going to throw negative one in the box. But then this is where it gets a little bit harder. I've got one X cubed. So this is my X cubed column. Notice that I don't have an X squared. Well, I have to put something there that reminds me that I do not have an X squared. So where an X squared would have gone, I got to put a zero as a, as a spacer zero. That's going to make sure everything's lined up. There's also not an X term. So I need to put another spacer zero underneath the X column because there is not an X term. And then for the number term, oh yeah, I got a negative one. And so I'm good there, but I have to put those two spacer zeros because I'm missing an X squared and an X term. Once you've done that, now we're just doing it. Bring down the one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply. Ooh, I get negative two in that last column. So be careful there. A lot of times that those numbers are so easy that you do weird stuff, but negative two is an answer. So is negative one a root? Nope. Because the order, or if I plugged in negative one, I would get negative two. That's not zero. So it is not going to be an x-intercept. Is x minus three a factor? So it's written with x. So I'm going to write positive three in the box. What's going to be here? One. 0x cubed, negative 25x squared. 0x, 144 is my number. Now we're going to do it. Bring down the 1. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Uh-oh, we're getting big. Add negative 48. Negative 48 times 3. That is negative 144. Yay. I get 0. So yay, smiley face. Is it a factor? Yep, because I got zero. That means the ordered pair three comma zero exists on my graph. And also it wasn't X to the fourth problem. So if it was X to the fourth, this one is X cubed plus three X squared minus 16 X minus 48. That is what's left over to find my other answers. All right, so that's the main idea of what's going on there. Okay, we could practice more on our own. I think we've done enough of that. Let's go down to below that. So same thing here on the second half of the day. I've done most of it. So the good news is it's not going to be a lot different. Okay, so example two here says, find all the zeros given one of them. So no longer is it a question. It's not, is this a root? I'm telling you, X plus three is a factor. So if I were to set this thing up and it says X plus three, so I'm going to throw negative three in the box because it's written with X. One six, negative one, negative 30. I am telling you that X plus three is a factor. So if it is a factor, I'm going to get zero there at the end. If I know that, then I just got to do the same thing I always do. One, negative three, add them, I get three. Multiply, I get negative nine. Add them, I get negative 10. Multiply, I get 30. Oh yeah, I get zero. Like I knew I was going to because it told me it was a factor. And so what we're going to do next is I've already shown you. I'm finding all of the zeros. Well, I found one of them, but because it was an X cubed problem, I know I was going to have three answers. It was an X cubed. I found one answer. So now this is one X squared plus three X minus 10. To find my other two answers, I just need to solve this X squared problem. Well, I know how to solve X squared problems. I'm going to factor it. X plus five X minus two. So my answers here, my roots, my zeros, my x-intercepts are going to be negative 5, positive 2, and negative 3. Don't forget about that guy up there as well. Those are my three answers to this problem. Again, when I graphed that guy, those were the three spots I found. I already did that one. Let's try it again. 3 is a root, not a question. It's telling you. So 1. 4, negative 15, negative 18. It is a root, so I'm going to go ahead and put a zero there at the end because I know it's going to be a zero. Drop my 1, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. I got zero. It is a root. That one works. Now I need to solve this thing. It was x cubed, so this is 1x squared plus 7x plus 6. So I just go one less, and then I count down. x squared, x number. 
Then all I got to do is factor that guy. What two numbers multiply together to get six and add to get seven? X plus six, X plus one. So my zeros are at X is equal to negative six, negative one. And don't forget about that guy right there, three. All right, keep working here. We're doing well. Trying to decide what's different here at the bottom. All right, let's do a, let's do two more. I think you're getting the idea of here. Um, is there one that's harder than others? Sorry, I should have done this before. Yeah, let's jump down to this one. Let's go down to number five. All right, so same idea applies here. Boom, right here. How many answers is this problem going to have? It's going to have four. The good news is they already told me two of them. That was nice. I'll set this thing up. So I'm going to go box and a line. 1x to the fourth, negative 7x cubed, 9x squared, 7x minus 10. I'm trying to decide if or negative 1 and 1 are roots. So I'm going to go ahead and put negative 1 in the box. I'm going to bring down my first number, multiply, add it, multiply. That's 8. Uh, 9 plus 8 is 17. Negative 1 plus 17 is negative 17. That's negative 10. Multiply it out, I get 10. Guess what? I got zero like I thought. This was an x to the fourth problem. So this one right here would represent 1x cubed minus 8x squared plus 17x minus 10. Which is fine, except I'm not very good at solving x cubes. I can solve x squareds, but x cubes are hard. I could probably, I could try to factor by grouping, but this one doesn't look like you can factor by grouping. So that doesn't help me at all. So instead, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do it again. I know that negative one works. This new answer, this thing right here, I'm going to do synthetic division with one. It was an X cubed problem, so now I'm just going to do synthetic division again. And I know that this is going to get me zero because it's, if it's a root of this original function, it's going to be a root of this secondary function when I divide it out. I'm going to just go again, drop the one. One times one is one. Negative eight plus one is negative seven. Negative one times negative seven is negative seven. 10, 10, 0. Great. I still got 0. It was an x to the fourth. Then it was an x cubed. Now it's 1x squared minus 7x plus 10. Now that it's a quadratic, I can factor. x, uh, let's go minus 5 and x minus 2. So what do we get here? I get zeros. I get roots at x is equal to negative 1, positive 1, 5, and 2. Boom, boom, and this guy, and that guy. So again, the only trick there was since they gave me two roots, I did synthetic division once and then jumped right back in to synthetic division again. All right, hopefully you're doing pretty well with this. Let's do one last one of that just so you can see it. So here is my polynomial. I know negative 1 and 5 are roots. So box line. I don't care which number I start with. Let's start with 5, just because. 1, negative 12, 34, negative tw uh, positive 12, sorry. Positive 12, negative 35. I know I'm going to get 0. Bring it down. Uh, negative 1, negative 5, mm, 7, 35, 0. Cool. It was an x to the fourth. Now this is an x cubed. I really don't want to do anything with x cubed. So since I just did five, let's go ahead and get rid of negative one as well. And again, I know it's a zero, so I can go ahead and put that. Drop my one, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, zero, boom. That was x cubed. So what does this leave me with? x squared minus 8x plus 7. And so that's going to factor into x minus 7 and x minus 1. So my roots, my zeros, my solutions at x is equal to 5, negative 1, 7, and positive 1. Boom. Hope that makes sense to you. Synthetic division, it's not hard. Uh, once you understand the concept of it, it should go pretty smoothly. Hope that's true for you. If not, ask me questions. See you guys.